morning everybody uh, this is a uh, guru tom penya um, and welcome to episode 330 and tonight we're going to have again that to shishi inokala inokaya for the second part of his interview but this time we're going to focus on the sports and his uh, his uh, wellness uh, center and also his um, all the things that he's doing now with M Gear okay but before we bring that to Inokalia uh, for us tonight just a reminder uh, on Wednesday we're going to have the interview with uh, Guru Stephanie Lee okay of Astig uh, Lameco uh, it's going to be at 10 o'clock here in the UK and tomorrow it's going to be the test run so she's going to share with us some um, ideas uh, how to do specific attribute training uh, uh, using solo drills okay but tonight we're gonna have the man himself michelangelo kawabanga hi Latu. good evening <clears throat> good evening tom okay uh, really happy to be back how are you here. doing yeah very good very good uh you know we are all set here we are in the m gear studio as you can see we're all uh this back we have all this uh, uh posters and the behind me we have been traveling around in ontario you know going to different uh uh events and uh you know function function and uh you know coach uh, rebecca of m gear Mahalika studio is just really supportive of our sports journeys here in canada yeah you've been very busy you've been very busy and so was m gear <laughs> yeah. so is m gear i mean uh yeah. i'm actually glad that you you managed to do all this uh, do this tie up with each other yeah it's uh things yeah. happen in a time you know i have been kind of working on my own and uh, also coach rebecca is doing the same and it just compliments us because uh, what he's doing with M Gear, with all this gadget, as you can see, <laughs> I have my smart wallet with me. <laughs> I've got and, mine. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> look at that! So you know, it's like uh, being functional, just like uh, Philippine martial art, functional, practical, simple, and it works. So wow. that's what M Gear is all about, and uh, that's what we really our culture you know that's what i really learned from philippine martial arts is just to make it work <laughs> nice nice okay so before we go to the actual interview um we would like to basically just say hi to those who have those who have tuned in tonight of course dean franco the head honcho is here he's tuning in oh wow oh, yeah and Thank remind you. again guys uh on thursday uh, Dean is going to be uh, also interviewing Burton Richardson. Okay, just a little bit blogging. And okay. Patrick Maldonado is here saying hello, everyone. Lawrence wow, Eugenio, thank you, thank you. my lightning kapatid from uh, California. Uh, wow, greetings. Uh, just finished solo training, now watching from Santa Rosa, California. Good evening, guys. Wow. Okay. Thank oh, and you get to it uh, from Germany. Us. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> So guys, yeah. if you're going to have any question for Datu Shishir uh, later on, you can put it in the comment box and we'll we'll try to basically address it during the interview. Okay? Yes. So remember, okay. we're going to be focusing quite a lot on the sports I need tonight. And basically all the things that, all the activities, the events that uh, Datu Shishir is doing in, um, <coughs> uh, to basically to promote it. Yes, Dean. Ninja Turtle Power. <laughs> Kawabanga. Turtle Power. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, you know, just I just remember that Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go Rap. The, the, ninja, uh, the ninja Rap. <laughs> go Ninja. I go think, ninja. yeah, we, 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 that has been used in even like cheerleading, cheer dancing. For, yeah, it, it was popular. Even, yeah. even the university where I came from, University of the Philippines, yes. we use it quite a lot. Yeah. So we just yeah, go, uh, yeah. go UP, go UP fight. <laughs> but the thing is, because it's repetitive, it's 
the energy actually just builds up it yes. helps the yeah. the energy uh, of the of the uh, or the audience to build up whenever they watch <laughs> any of the any of the games but yeah became really popular yeah yeah turtle all the way you know i did not realize yeah. how Kawabanga. popular Kawabanga. <laughs> I mean, I have uh, lived that life since 92, did a movie and then did a TV series and uh, then went up to the mountain for five years and then came back here, North America. Now I am brought to this Comic Con and, uh, you know, it's amazing. There's a lot of followers of the Turtles and uh, just uh, luckily I'm one of the original Michelangelo and now with M Gear, Maharlika Studio. Uh, we were able to combine our, you know, our resources and energy to go around and promote sports arnis here in Canada. As you know, I'm, uh, you know, we have uh, created the sports arnis uh, program for Canada uh, sports organization, which is the amateur sports org uh, in Canada to be accredited sports here in every province in Canada. And this is going towards the Olympic uh canada and uh in usa we are now in aau with uh icali group as well as the junior olympics so hey we're getting the close group olympics. to Honopolo. yeah <laughs> that's right that's right yeah <laughs> okay yeah, yeah yeah so how how did this uh came about how how did you conceptualize the sports i need well it's a long story because you know yeah, grandmaster presses <laughs> Let me, let, me, let me make it shorter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, you know, uh, Grandmaster Presses is Arnis for All. You know, he's all the way from Arnis for All. And, uh, you know, obviously, modern Arnis started uh, the sports Arnis in the Philippines. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, first it became uh, a Republic Act to be declared National Sports and Martial Arts of the Philippines. And then they were able to get it approved to be a member or uh, uh, affiliated with the PS, uh, PSC, Philippine Sports Commission. And then from then it become uh, associate member of Philippine Olympic Committee. And uh, so there's already that Olympic uh, idea at the time where Roland Dantes was uh, already promoting it uh and uh arnis philippines and then mm -hmm. of course uh it was able to be a demonstration sport in the uh, uh games. sia games southeast asian games in the and become a member of the olympic council of asia so in north america there's really no movement here to bring it to the olympic uh, body or to the to the amateur mm -hmm. uh level of uh you know of uh, sports and uh grandmaster presses was here with me you know from the early 80s and he has been coaching me already to you know to create uh some kind of uh uh you know some kind of affiliation towards at that time it's bc sports in british mm -hmm. columbia and so in the okay. 80s there's already that concept in our head and uh, in fact, uh, one of the director of uh, uh, Sports BC actually came and they said, oh, you know, well, at the time we're collecting uh, a lot of, uh, you know, sort of, uh, sort of uh, bikers <laughs> in uh, uh, our knees because obviously, you know, it looks uh, little, eh? it would stick. So, you know, some of our, uh, Sifu and uh, in, in, instructor are from law enforcement and from yeah. uh, jail jail warden. So we are getting oh, okay. a lot of uh, hard, uh, you know, hard fighters at the time. And so, okay. you know, we, I think uh, you will see in my video, we already started my uh, Arnis 101 video and I think 84. We're already wearing um, hockey helmets and, you know, hockey gear right. and hockey, uh, you know, uh, gloves. And, you know, we're already, I, I think at the time we're still uh, using, uh, yeah, we're using light stick at the time. And, 
it did not go very far. It's uh, very, you know, very, uh, I guess, uh, it looks brutal. It looks non, okay. non sportive. <laughs> Okay. And we need to kind of we need to kind of tune it up, and uh, obviously you know we hold tournaments already in the eighties. Uh, this mm -hmm. uh, at that time it is the you know which we call now uh, padded or in padded competition or you know the non-contact divisions point fighting division. In some other, uh, I think in Philippines they call it uh, blade concept. Uh, uh, uh division which is like point system mm. you know you cut okay. you get cut you get a point so any part of the body you get you get uh hit you get a point mm. and so you know we are already using that in the 80s okay. um it's uh, when the COVID came uh because obviously from vancouver after then i got my total uh contract I'm not able to do anything at the time. And then after the turtle, of course, you know, Grandmaster Remy Pesos at the time passed away. So okay. there's a lot of uh, commotion, you know, me, I, myself, I don't know where to start. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna go to US and I went there seven years. I, uh, I was just coaching and doing arnis with the golfers in Florida. And we still continued on doing sports arnis. At, uh, we're already starting mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, get the padded stick uh, introduced to our competition. And mm -hmm. uh, went back to Philippines. There's a lot more competition uh, already in Philippines, which is uh, yeah. uh, sponsored by Department of Education. And so, you know, I got introduced to that as well. <clears throat> but then, you know, there's some changes that went, uh, you know, with the pickup and I Arnis, uh, pickup now is obviously the, uh, the federation for, uh, for Arnis Kalis Krima in the Philippines yeah. and, you know, the Olympic, uh, status of I Arnis is yeah. changed to, you know to pick up uh so then i so i went uh, to to you to to canada and uh, there is already a, uh, an organization of irnis internationally because our goal at the time is to have 15 countries 15 countries to be approved sports of olympic in their country and then we are going to be uh uh, applying to be a demonstration sport, you know, for okay. Olympic. And, you know, that can be uh, in, in Asia, that can be in Europe, that can be in North America or South America. But we are, we are going to walk it this way. But then COVID uh, hit and everybody is frozen. And uh, at the time, there's already, uh, you know, a discussion of how Canada sport will approve sports arnis, uh, you know, using <laughs> sticks. And uh, I remember it become more, it hit us more when uh, I was introducing sports arnis to one of the rec center in uh, British Columbia. And they approve okay. approved it. They, they approve the, you know, they, they actually like it, the board in the uh yeah. in the sports director in the rec center approve it even i was able to get uh insurance you know to you know to 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 do sports arnis and arnis calis okay. in the rec center but uh somehow it went higher to the to the board and uh when they they did not even ask when they heard it is like stick fighting it, they disapprove our our uh, our application to be taught. All right. All right. And there's primarily Filipino community in this uh, in this uh, community. And they said, did they say know, did they say why? Well, just because of the uh, I guess you know the what they saw uh, you know the combative aspect you know the 
you know, it, it did not. They they're very they're very uh, uh, cautious about you know their kickboxing is also trying to get their their uh, accreditation and uh, kickboxing. So this is from a different association, the kickboxing. No, no, uh, kickboxing. Kickboxing, oh, kickboxing is also okay. trying to get their you know their uh, application and it so <laughs> happened now we have like a stick a stick uh a stick live stick uh you know uh competition and just because of that not really asking you know how safe it is and you know our affiliation with already olympic in the philippines and in asia just because they heard that it is or that they heard they actually saw in the videos in youtube and all that that you know there are uh, this uh, full contact stick fighting, all that. They disapprove us, and uh, you know everything is set there already. But we cannot run the program. And but I uh, one suggestion is, uh, you know, I have to be or Arnis should be uh, approved sports of British Columbia. And okay. so that kind of hit my head already. How can we have uh, our niece, our Filipino national sports in the Philippines, to be approved sports of uh, British Columbia? And, you know, I'm looking at Canada. I'm looking at Olympics. I cannot even get approved in a recreation center in British Columbia. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of tricky because um uh, of course when 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 they try to like look at the competitive side of our niece and the moment they see in youtube so i would say something like dog brothers or something then definitely they want <laughs> they want to prove it because it's gonna it's gonna cause it's non-sporty it hurts people it's not, you know it, exactly exactly and i mean just like uh just like i i what i what i said even before they they accepted taekwondo to be in the olympics they had to make sure that taekwondo have to change uh the way they do their scoring the oh. way they do their the way they they present their competition because during that time when taekwondo was applying to be in the olympics they actually score much higher when it comes to head concussion injury than amateur boxers so Ooh. I'm pretty sure the Olympic Committee won't won't basically approve this because that's gonna be health and safety issue. That's gonna be uh, a problem when it comes to uh, uh, the health safety. of their athletes. Yeah. Yeah. Safety. Yeah. Yeah. So no Olympic Committee will basically will approve yeah. this. So yeah. that's why it's important and it's actually good that you you um, manage to like modify yeah. the yeah. Yeah. the rules and everything to be able to be accepted by the olympic committee and this is something really important that's why mm -hmm. even when it comes to sparring or competition in, in fma it's really yeah. important that we try to be inclusive when it comes to the format yes. because no you can't you can't you can't basically operate in a single format that's yes. that's that's going to be a reality <clears throat> i mean yeah. some people would like low armor and they they like hurting and bashing each other and <laughs> some people like to do it in a more sporty way the yeah. more that they know the, the in a way that they can still go to the office the following day without without <laughs> any injury yeah, i mean and stuff. Yeah. exactly and so, especially yeah. if you're going to uh get kids involved Yes. No totally. parent will yeah. allow their kids yes. to end up like having head concussion and everything after oh, big, after big a time. competition. So big you time. always have to look at the safety issue. Well, and it's that, good now that we do have the equipment to do right. it. Yeah. Well, and uh, we are improving more here in in M Gear. We're actually developing, uh, you know, like a touch, uh, you know, kind of uh, electronic uh, sort of uh, way that. It, it will it's like once you get hit, yeah, it's like fencing or so, something like that. Uh, you know, we are developing that, you know, for the whole body and for the head and all that, uh, you know, uh, advanced technology 
So, you know, we can be really fair in our, uh, you know, competition. Scoring. It's yeah. going to gonna make it easier for the judges as well because a clear shot is a clear shot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's ongoing now in M-Gear Studio. Uh, Coach Rebecca with Technician are working on, on that already. So there's a lot wow. of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, evolution that we are developing. And uh, what we did in Canada, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot more uh, work because, uh, you know, they really watch uh, contact sport. We are under combat sport. Uh, yeah. Combat sport, that means there's contact. And so we're even yeah. arguing that, that maybe, maybe we're not really under uh, combat sport which uh you know we're not punching we're not kicking we're because yeah, fencing more of the contact yeah contact yeah fencing sport. is apparently not under combat sport you know no. and uh you know so we're arguing that maybe we're not under combat sport uh, so long as we follow the the guideline of safety of uh mm. you know non-discrimination uh, yung uh, coaching certification, player certification, yeah. official certification. So we really have to follow the format of sports karate, of uh, even sports boxing, even golf, even fencing. So we we follow their route and came up with the uh, sports harness uh, curriculum. Okay. So right now we have uh, an approved. Uh, curriculum for uh, you know PSO provincial sports uh, org and the national sports org and they allowed us to have a national body of sports arnis Kali Skrima uh, in Canada. Now we are now working towards uh, membership. I have we have to have mm -hmm. one thousand members per province. Uh, mm -hmm. as okay. well as it has to be regionally distributed. It cannot be in one region only. So that's why okay. I am going around right now. I am in Ontario. I'm going to the different, uh, you know, town or city in Ontario, uh, to be able to gain that membership. I think we are close. We are going to probably be in a 500 already by the end of this month. Uh, okay. and then I go to, I go to Calgary on the 15th. We just had a competition in British Columbia. Okay. Okay. So, uh, if we get even half of what they're, if they want, I think, uh, you know, they will, they will already, cause right now we are sort of, uh, there is the stages, there is a uh, affiliation, mm -hmm. accreditation, then there's approval. So we have those steps. And our coach in our knees become a member of a uh, coaching association of Canada. So okay. this is uh, really, really great because then it gives mm -hmm. more our coaches uh, education. There's a long term path. You know, we have uh, we, we are constantly educating our coaches, uh, you know, how to uh, how to improve uh you know from their knowledge no, that will to, be that will be that will be good yeah because yeah, you can help them uh, improve yeah. pedagogically uh mm. help them basically like how to how to how to uh create a syllabus yes and also like give them like ideas how to train their students for competition yeah that'd yeah. be great yeah so kuya di kuya di I know you're you're doing a you're going to do a conference like a teachers yes. credit in yes yeah in Florida this December right yeah this this uh you know after I was able to kind of get you know things happening here in in uh in Canada uh I went to US and introduced sports artists there and uh <laughs> Tuhon Apollo called me. <laughs> I said, who's this? Oh, remember me? I said, no, <laughs> this is Apollo. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Where? Oh, I attended your meditation uh, seminar. You're one of the guests at, uh, you know, at the uh, Ernie Reyes uh, Taekwondo. Uh, 
you know, master, the, he, uh, Ernie Ray Sr. is uh, holding this master class and you're one of the, you know, uh, you presented meditation and of course Arnie's in the, so I was one of the, I was one of the uh, guy there. I said, oh, now I remember. And he said, guess what? You know, I am now uh, doing Aikali. Uh, I do, do, he does Taekwondo. But uh, he was, uh, he, ever since he's been uh, learning Pikiti from, uh, from uh, a GT, uh, Grand Tuhon Gahe, and he's been promoting more a Filipino martial arts than Taekwondo. <laughs> so he said, yeah. I like what you're doing. <laughs> you know come on down he invited me in maryland and uh, he says uh we got to do something about the name because we are kali <laughs> we cannot just adopt our niece and remove kali <laughs> and he has already over you know 100 uh, i think over 100 clubs that taekwondo converted to fma uh but they have never really you know implemented the sports arnis program you know, because they always mm -hmm. do blade. So I said, hey, I don't have problem with name. Yes, let's call it Arnis, Kali, uh, Iskrima. And that's what the world, the Wicca came about. Uh, okay. You know, Tuhan Gahe uh, uh, created the Wicca, uh, which is the world Iskrima Kali Arnis organization. And I tell you, you know, uh, nothing but uh, bow to Tuhon Apollo. Not only a great guy, uh, he invited me to you know San Jose, and uh, within three months we were able to present Sports Arnis Kalis Krima in AAU Taekwondo Regional Championship in San Jose. That's in June 24 nice. last. No, June 24 only that this year. Yeah, this year. This year. Yeah, this year. Yeah. I saw the I saw that. Yeah. Saw that. And yeah. the Taekwondo group mm -hmm. apparently had been doing sports arnis already, calling it uh weapon division for several years. Yeah, they do. <laughs> mm, they do. Yeah. They do. And I met the yeah. head, I met the, I met the president of ATA, uh Grandmaster Paplu. And uh, he loves the concept, you know, to bring the that division into uh, into Wicca, Olympics. into IRNIS, mm -hmm. uh, IRNIS into sports, sports Arnis, Kalis Krima, and even invited us to be a demonstration sport last August, uh, you know, but uh, we weren't able to comply because we have to have 300 competitors and it was so close and that is already the junior olympics in united states <laughs> so it's okay. growing fast okay. it's uh what we need to do now and that's why the conference for january for uh, december 9 and 11 is to bring to invite you know all the fma masters teachers uh you know gurus and this is for us and uh, we now had to create, you know, some kind of a long-term program and the accreditation, who's going to be doing what. So, you know, okay. that is what the conference is all about. All right. So let's, let's, let's basically plug in the conference now to everybody who's going to be interested. So the conference is going to be one day, two days? No, it's three days. It's uh, three days. 9 okay. to 11 in Fort Lauderdale, 11 of December, Florida. Okay. And in the conference, what are the topics that that will be that are going to be discussed or going to be presented? Well, uh, you can go and log into uh, Wika. That's uh, WikaSports.org. It will mm -hmm. basically give you all the detailed uh, program. But uh, what I know is uh, this is to bring some kind of uh, you know camaraderie some kind of unity to all the different because uh, uh, it's open for Screma for any FMA organization to mm -hmm. join and uh, you know there is a competition <clears throat> how we can we, what we did is uh, we we created 
uh, stages, like uh, an amateur, semi-professional, and professional <laughs> stages in uh, competition. Because like you said, there are people that want less armor, and then there are others mm. who are more, you know, more armor, and there are people who want to do live stick and all that. So we have to kind of create, you know, a, 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 you know a, a, a platform for this, you know, uh, introducing, you know, the, uh, the sport aspect of it. And uh, obviously, okay. uh, we are right now in the amateur stage where we use more, for kids, we use a bigger padding, bigger padding, yeah. light, light head gear, and they can, and of mm. course, uh, gloves, but they can decide whether they can have the body armor uh, or, not. or not. So, so these are the things that will be discussed during the three-day conference. Yes, yes, yes. plus certification for all the coaches that are going to be holding this uh, competition because everyone is going to be, uh, they will get membership in AAU, their club, Okay. their coaches and their participants okay. you know this is uh you know uh we are gonna be under uh amateur athletic union which is uh mm -hmm. you know a national organization for amateur sports in united states so you know the different region and so everyone needs to be registered similar in canada we have to you know, we have to uh, create a mm. program for and certify all our coaches, all our officials, and our players. And we have to submit that to, yeah, you have to, yeah. Yeah. to mm. Canada Sports. That is important. That for is important. insurance and, and also for, you know, for uh, becoming a legitimate body of uh, Sports Canada. Okay. And do you think we are... Uh the conferences that you're going to do will be an avenue also for the coaches to learn or to basically update their knowledge when Mita. it comes to using yeah. uh, to using science or biomechanics when it comes to training because oh I, yes i Totally. that is yeah. something because i do remember when uh when uh, when i was still a university a, a professor in the university when we mm. whenever we do have conferences like this Yes, we do basically present all these things. So, like, yes. basically, what what are the new trends when it comes to, mm. to conditioning, athletic conditioning, yes. and all those yeah. things that might yes. be helpful as well. And also, yeah. like, how to use, like, for example, uh, mindfulness yes. to help yes. athletes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So th these are the things that basically would be helpful for coaches to learn as well. And what, it would what... be good because yes, overall that will help every FMA teacher and coaches to also like progress when it comes to knowledge and yes. uh, update when it comes to teaching skills, pedagogy yes. as well. Totally. So what we did here in, uh, you know, in Sports Harness, what we did is we adapted our HELOT. Our HELOT is a form of natural healing and then alignment. Okay. And, uh, so, you know, to help uh, our athletes, you know, to heal, and to Recover. understand more of their body mm -hmm. and so they you know they can conserve energy and aside from that we also uh you know i introduced uh together with my sister who is a uh you know uh mental coach a psychiatrist md and the the makapuso heartful meditation makapuso okay. heartful meditation is actually a, a, a natural you know, a culture from the Philippines where we keep smiling. We are smiling, happy people. <laughs> and so mm, in heartfulness, mm, yeah. we let go of the brain, the mind, and we go to the heart where we feel joyful, happy, and, you know, we integrate that with our paghinga, the breathing, and we direct the energy to the heart and to smile there and feel the smile energy to relax every part of our body. And to be grateful, you know, we have the gratefulness there. We have the letting go, the forgiveness. It's a practical spirituality. As you know, Filipinos are very, mm. very mm. religious, very spiritual people. 
So, so all, it's going to be part of the training program. Yes, yes, you know, and, and That's you, brilliant. in in Cali, in Cali, they already there, uh, you know, they already integrate, you know, the Pagmano, Pagmano, their bowing is Pagmano and uh, uh, Pagmamahal or uh, from from my heart, from Makapuso kind of, uh, you know, uh, greetings, you know, from the heart kind of, uh, you know. <laughs> So I believe even for myself that Filipino martial art is more of a heartful, uh, combative uh, martial art. It is not technical only, it's not a brute force, it's a blade weapon. And, you know, we Filipinos are heartful people. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we integrate that training that, okay, to be heartful, you have to be true to yourself you have to be positive you have to be encouraging mm -hmm. negativity in the brain let go monkey mind let go go to the yeah. our our uh, childlike heart where we feel you know we are unafraid joyful yeah we are mm -hmm. joyful we are uh, serving others that's our filipino Selfless, culture yeah. that's our filipino mm -hmm. culture that's that's who we are and unfortunately of course you know once we get lost into our monkey brain or to our this is where the, the you know mind, the yeah. issue now of the identity crisis you know we get lost to our emotion where we are always fighting or we are either running away you know fight and flight response but as we become more conditioned into our heart where we feel we don't have to do anything except relax flow that's where the flow comes in is then mm, you know we eliminate the stress <laughs> in our journey and even in our stick you know we just flow you know we are not like hacking it you know putting too much energy in there because we're a blade uh you know <laughs> we're blade martial art anything that happens or that connects you know is gonna be you know painful you know if we put that yeah. little force in there but we don't have to you know we also have the controlled dumog technique where, where we can have the evasion mga, you know uh paluso technique so we really yeah. have a wonderful beautiful art that we can use you know for now for the globe for the world yeah. the sports institution is there already you know sports institution mm -hmm. is huge and you know there's different level of competition there from amateur to pro and so why not you know we're already 100 the countries all over the world all we need is 15 country you know to be approved sports yeah, in their country and go to their olympic body I'm, you know i'm just saying olympic because everybody knows olympic is but there's other professional amateur sports there such as sports accord or goodwill games or you know there's a lot of other you know games in there that we can you know uh, uh affiliate with we don't have to redo what's done already all we need to do yeah. now is just you know just like we did in philippines you know there is now 20 million filipino kids doing our niece in department of education that's 20 yeah, million yeah. kids yeah, yeah. and you know this mm. these kids can get educated uh you know doing our needs you know they can get a scholarship they can travel but you know of course we want to grow you know we want to grow that uh, system because you know philippines is a growing nation mm -hmm. sometimes there's a lot of uh whom you know <laughs> whom you know in there <laughs> so even you're the best guy if you that's don't true. know anybody <laughs> You can be yeah, that's out. very true. Sometimes it's it's who you know, not what you know. <laughs> and that's why if we can gather around the globe, then we can actually create an international body. And we have international competition. We have a cross-cultural, uh, you know, coaches can grow. I mean, you know, I don't have to pay out of my own pocket anymore <laughs> to travel yeah, or to, yeah. you know. <laughs> Yeah. we don't have to rely on the attendance of the student you know that's coming we can actually get funded and that's a really good thing in canada 
I hope uh, you know other countries will fund more sport. And if uh, if our Niskal mm. Skrima is uh, approved sports of that country, there is budget for that, and we should fight mm. for that budget. You know, and this is what I am really feel strongly now is because Philippines they have our bill passed as a national sports and martial arts of the Philippines, and yet they haven't passed IRR, which is the, the implementing rules and regulation that gives money and power and you know and the support to the organization of uh, our needs. Okay. Do, do, you, do you know why why this hasn't been <laughs> Pare, you know, I is have it politics. Asked politics <laughs> money you know now you know there is like every year there is money that the government will put to the sports and right now it's everybody you know everybody runs after that money already yeah now you're talking that. yeah now you're talking arnis to become the you know the national sports and martial of the philippines we're going to be taking probably half of that budget from everybody <laughs> yeah but but yeah That's... but but basically <laughs> we know that financial support to the athletes is one of the things that is not happening in the philippines it's crazy yeah it's crazy the, only, the, only, the only time that athletes the, the only time that athletes can actually survive with their training if is if they do get their own sponsorship yeah or they are basically financially rich to start with yes yes that's why our boxers don't yeah. manage to uh get to see to be to yeah. be filled to be fielded in in international competitions because they don't have the capacity to produce their own yeah, yeah their own yeah. money or yeah. they don't yeah. manage to get sponsorship we do have yeah. quite a lot of good boxers that didn't manage wow. to make it we're, we're very good. lucky for money Pacquiao yeah, to yeah. be able to do it but <laughs> that's money I mean, Pacquiao, been, one in a billion probably yeah exactly <laughs> this have been this have been a problem ever since and yeah. um uh, i mean i when i was of uh when i was a faculty in in the up we always have this kind of problem with the poc oh, okay yeah, uh, yeah. we always discuss this kind of problem and yeah that is that is basically a a a a a problem that has been like uh, within the happening within the the system for yeah yeah well obviously corruption if if corruption we manage to get very tough, yeah. if we manage to basically get uh irr passed yes. for for filipino for sports yes. Chinese, why not yes, totally and uh, i've got a question kuya yeah. <clears throat> okay so um Format wise, I'll basically I'll, I'll, I'll basically ask you about the format of sports signings mm -hmm. and how different is this from from the others. But with regards to the format that is being adopted by PCAF, is the sports signings any different from it? Yes. Well, this is what we did. Uh, we have uh, uh, you know uh, brought in what's already being used. In the Philippines, so in padded in in the uh, uh, non-contact division, or they call it bladed division. Maybe I can demonstrate it here. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Coach oh, yes, Beko please. probably is gonna <laughs> gonna join me. Uh, Coach Beko, uh, come on down. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna uh, demonstrate the. Okay, Coach Beko is in the house. Hello everyone. Hello. Yeah, Kuya, maybe you can you can bring the camera a little bit further from, from a little you, bit please. further. Okay, let's move. Let's move a little bit. Or you can move further from the camera. Yeah. Okay. How's that? Way, so How's that? We can yes. see it. No. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Doable. But... Doable. Okay. A little bit more. Let's move that. A little bit okay. more. So we All can right. see it better. Yeah. Basically, you know. Uh... Yeah. That's 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 much better. Yeah. All right. So we created a command. You know the command is basically you know we say uh you know the the first the uh the head referee is in the middle you know he will say the command is basically puesto that means you come forward both players are going to come forward and then we will say pugay okay everybody bows and then we will say handa 
Handa means okay, they're gonna put now the stick, you know, to be uh you know getting ready to fight. Ready position. And then yep. yeah, and then we will say Laban. Okay, so they are gonna move, you know, to be able to you know get their uh you know your their technique uh in a striking zone and in this in this uh system what we did is like any hit if i hit in the hand that's one point clear point you know, obviously if it is become clash no point okay so the the referee will say hinto okay and then uh you know puntos yeah that he will there's okay, a record yeah, point. there's there's a recorder there there's timer there and uh there's another uh you know uh judge in that side also in this in this side here uh, but any any puntos has to be synchronized so when i say puntos at least two of the uh you judges. know judges is gonna call that uh, that side that puntos in one side any okay. any any uh any less if it is like the other points there the other one point there so clash no point okay so okay all right okay now every part of the hit it can be hit in the head that's one point it can be hit in the leg that's one point so but in usa what we did is you can accumulate point uh immediately say and that is like three hit if i hit here it's clear if i hit here it's clear i hit in the leg it's clear that can be two points right there you know i know for some and uh we haven't uh, uh we haven't uh tried it is they put more uh, uh points, in the head. points in the head they said that's two points because it's deadly uh we haven't adopted that yet uh we okay. we just do the one point system and if it is a good clear point that is like two points and the uh, 10 in a one minute round is already a winner for that round all right okay, okay. so yeah we just go one minute i think in philippines it's like two minutes per round and uh same thing 10 points you know they they win already uh so basically you know if you win the two rounds then obviously automatically you you win that uh you know that that fight already so that's gonna be three minute uh no no uh, one three minute, rounds, one minute each one minute uh 10 10 <clears throat> points now there is a okay. there is a knockout which we don't call knockout because in canada you know very sensitive so we say uh winner or total winner uh i think we didn't in in tagalog we call it uh uh you know uh uh panalo uh total panalo or something okay. yeah i have okay, to all right. get so this is the the knockout the knockout is if he strikes i hit him in the hand i hit him in the hand the i this or or I can basically the stick goes down and uh, it's a disarm. I hit him and there is no retaliation from the other person that we consider that All knockout. Right. But if I just hit him in the hand okay. and I did not follow through, the stick went down, that's just a point. You know, it, oh, there, there has to be a follow okay. through that is not countered to, to get that. Okay. So if I block here, I disarm. And then I, you know, I hit him. Uh, that's and I hit him, and that is a clear. That can so be. That's a knockout. That can be a knockout. Yeah. Not right. easy. Not easy to do, but you never know. It can happen. We eliminated the diving. The diving to make a point. You know, we eliminated that. And any, uh, you know, thrust to the back. You know, if you you turn around. You know, of course, the kicking, the punching, the swearing, all of those are uh, uh, unsported conduct. You know, we we oh, also yeah, unsports ones like conduct. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they the trust we added the trust to the body, but not to the throat. Yeah, or not okay. up. Yeah, not up here. 
not to the head not, not to, to the, the neck yeah, and to up the, yeah yeah because right now you know the only thing that's protecting now it depends if it is like a fencing gear good but now with the rail in there uh, oh yeah yeah it's, that's it's, that's not a good yeah it's still it still might go in now okay. the the we we do this in the knife as well you know short blade similar similar technique you know you get cut one point okay. that kind of thing you know so accumulated the uh, point 10 also one minute is that's the only difference of knife and then the padded stick is uh is the short short uh, the knife version and the long stick okay so all the targets on the side and in front is yeah valid yeah valid any yeah, any yeah. and any target on the back is not not allowed yeah if he turns around in the back and then i you know uh, i hit him here you stop uh, him. Yeah, yeah we we when he turns around we just stop you know the fight and we can probably uh you know make a warning to the person doing fighting that uh, you know he cannot he cannot turn back. Uh, he okay, cannot use but, his back for shield or anything like that. Yeah. All right. So you okay? But it, will there be like any kind of a point deduction? Yes. If there anyway, is two okay. warnings already, there's a point deduction. That's uh, okay. you know, that is uh, for getting off the you know the 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 ring if they go out there twice okay. if they drop their stick the second time mm -hmm. you know they got already uh one point uh taken off okay and this particular ruling yeah oh yeah this particular ruling is uh for which category this is the point fighting division or padded stick division okay now is there's another the uh no not lowest necessarily but uh you know you do that uh, this we can do this in junior and kids uh we can All do right, this okay. also for adult but you know this is the point fighting uh you know division. fight division yeah okay, now so the next one is the second category is the continuous fight division continuous fight okay. is almost what wika is doing already except for we eliminated the close quarter where you know you're just kind of doing a banigo. You know what we want is for for you to go out and hit, 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 miss, hit, strike that kind of thing. You're, you can go in, do, but you cannot stay there and then do stay your, close. Yeah, or do the abanico. for a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And again, that is one minute accumulated point then you know whosoever gets the most point uh the aggression the uh, uh you know athleticism all of those technically all of those add to the to the winner okay and then have you got another division yeah same thing and we have the sayao division of course you know we have the traditional oh, okay traditional and then the uh, open uh, division uh, but of course we are trying to say closer to the uh, Filipino uh, cultural uh, you know team so not yeah. the typical Naruto yeah. or Chinese okay so you said oh, yeah there are two there are two types okay so yes. the, the first one is uh traditional or classical yeah the traditional so what's classical the, yeah the third the second one a bit more yeah the traditional is uh you know we have in modern artists we have like a form so you know yeah. the form that we do you know all of that is like you know modern artists all of them do that i don't know about okay. kali but they have some you know form that they do as well maybe in screamer they do so we consider that as the traditional uh and of mm -hmm. course the costume you know how they all of those uh add to the presentation is how close it is you know to the to the culture and to the you know we want to be able to show culture 
in our Sayaw. Uh, okay. The open division is obviously, you know, they can do uh, different music. They can do some, you know, okay. uh, some, some, some rolling. Some or, stunts. Yeah, nothing like, okay. you know, they acrobatic and all that. All right. yeah, you can do some, uh, they can add more, uh, you know, uh, more flash in it. This is, this is actually good because you've got a division that allows creativity. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with the way they express themselves when it comes to forms. And there's a division that basically uh, keeps them staying on, on the traditional way yes. of doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want it to be too diluted uh, that it just goes flashy and entertaining. Because, you know, we want to bring our culture, our story. Yeah. You know, this is, yeah. uh, you know, this is from Philippines and this is how it's done from the past. You know, it's we are still, and I believe we should continue promoting where we come from and give acknowledgement, you know, to our elders and uh, you know mm. where wherever this technique came from, and you know we should uh, bring, uh, you know, respect and uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we have to highlight that into this new generation that's coming. Okay. So when, for example, kuya in the in in the both in the traditional and the open, does yes. it matter what kind of weapon they bring in the in the sayaw? Uh no, no, it can be any weapon. Uh, you know, can be knife, can be stick, can be karambit, can be balisong, can be. Yeah. Okay. So long as a Filipino good. in origin, and it cannot be like samurai. Or uh, you know, uh, <laughs> or a butterfly, no. sword, butterfly, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, butterfly blade, butterfly blade. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, you never so know. The... Later on, we're already discussing. Oh, how about you know? There are people who are saying, how how about you know panuntukan, or how about dumo, or how about you know the you know the the Sirada group, or you know all. You, we're starting, we're just wanting to get our door, uh, you know, uh, approved. You get one foot on the door. Yeah, yes, yeah. you know. So later on, probably, later on, we can probably accommodate everybody where, you know, there's going to be this division here, this division here, and it's all FMA. But uh, right now, we're just trying to get the stick approved. And even the knife was almost, it's just a demonstration you know during our uh, presentation but uh, everything is uh you know it's only one stick also uh you know so this is what we have created in our sports okay. arts Canada. so the the one that you are uh getting approved for the olympics that's basically the padded stick one yes 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 yeah 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 and okay. even in uh, you know even in Asia at the Oka uh, Asian uh, Sea Games, that's what they do is uh, you yeah. know the padded stick. And then now for the first the time, same. for the first time uh, they use uh, live stick under Wicca rules. You know so okay. you know the Sea Games actually adopted Wicca uh, rules in Sea Games using the. You know, uh, the screamer live stick, large, yeah, live stick, yeah, yeah, yeah. In okay, in the competition, but of course, that's gonna be like the thin ones, yeah. It's uh, basically it's a Wicca rules, uh, mostly Wicca, uh, you know, participant, uh, joined there, and you know, of course, it was a question, it was question, uh, for a while, but you know, well, it, it went through so. But it was not repeated. <laughs> there, it was not even our niece was not uh, included in the second SEA game in uh, Vietnam. So I think uh, you know we may have theory why, <laughs> but this is why okay. we are now focusing outside, <laughs> outside uh, you know more in North America in 
you know, in Europe, uh, outside Asia. Because uh, it's pretty much, it's going to kind of, you know, it's going to work its own in Asia. It's already organized, but, you know, there are some uh, tightening up needs to be done where politics should be a lot, a lot, uh, you know, it has to go down. And hopefully with what we are doing here in North America, you know, mm -hmm. our voice will be heard that, you know, let's just play. Let's not put politics in the, you know, in the game because everybody suffers. Everybody suffers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And of course, okay. in the Philippines, what we are hoping to do after our conference in in uh, in uh, Florida is to have an international FMA conference in the Philippines, in the Philippines, highlighting mm -hmm. the beauty of it and getting our new government, our new government to be, to showcase it to them because then hopefully they will already, you know, seriously approve. There's already draft of IRR, but since, uh i believe that's 2009 uh, uh when was that uh approved i th i think it's uh 2003 since 2003 it had never never uh never developed never passed i see so hopefully with the okay. new government they will they will approve it okay all right. Um, let's pause there a little bit and let's read some of the comments. <clears throat> okay. So uh, Dean said it's interesting. Uh, Terry Hoven from Stockton says hi. Uwe Kramer says you are responsible for Canada. GM Press has called you for this. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Julius is here. So that's Kawabanga. <laughs> Turtle uh, power. Uwe, I think this is on the on the mindfulness one. Uh, one of my teacher calls calls it Lahuka. So that's mm -hmm. by Jovelin. Oh, oh wow. wow. Um, okay, Jovelin. Hello. Yeah, but I think it's yeah, mindfulness is having a research now, even when it comes to. Uh, when it comes to doing it in martial arts, although it should have always been part and parcel of it, but not yes. not every teacher, not everybody could could be able to actually teach it or uh, uh, share it when it comes to teaching martial arts, especially yeah, well, when also when you start like uh, just becoming more physical. But I do like the way you approach it, Kuya, because it's, I mean, yeah, let, let's phrase it. Um, Especially the application of FMA is yes. combative, it's violent mm. if you're really going to use it. So you need something to balance it out with your mind. Oh, yeah. so the mindfulness okay. yeah. Is, yeah. is actually important. Yes. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, you're going to okay. suffer from it. I mean, emotionally, <laughs> psychologically, yeah. mentally. Yeah. Um, Kalis Magani said, thanks, Sheer, for continuing what we started on our concept of sports are knees. Yep. And then Lakbay Diwa said, are you going to do any annual demonstration? Can you do a demo? Yeah, just remove the chair. There you go, guys.
Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for indulging us. Oh. Uh, Robert Robinson, yes, indeed. Mindfulness is a key factor. That's true. Okay. Um, Oh, yeah, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Nah, not con no, nothing. <coughs> Maybe it ran out of battery. Yeah, we're waiting for Kuya's uh, audio to come back. So guys, uh, if you miss it out, so in this in this December, there's going to be a, a conference in Florida. Okay, a three-day conference in Florida for the certification and accreditation of teachers for the sports Chinese. So if you're interested, contact either Datu Sushi uh, in Ocalia, or you can go to Tuhon Apollo Ladra. Hello, Kuya. I still know nothing. Okay, so while we are while we are waiting, uh, once again, I would like to plug these uh, next two interviews. Uh, on Wednesday, I will be interviewing uh, Guru Stephanie Lee. Okay, uh, it's going to be at 10 o'clock here, uh, UK time. And on Thursday, Dean will be interviewing uh, Burton Richardson. Okay. I just don't know what time it is going to be, but yeah. Um, Oh, I think they're they're experiencing some network problem. There you go. He's back. One, two, three. There you go. Oh, there you are. Yes, Hello. I can hear you now. Hey. Yeah, now it's working. <laughs> Thanks to Rebecca. It's our uh, 
magician in the house. <laughs> yeah. One man. One man yeah. band. Yeah, we're going to be in a, a tech sure. show from uh, Mon uh, from Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in uh, uh, downtown Ontario. Downtown, downtown, downtown Toronto. Yeah, okay. So, okay. yeah. You know, we have been hitting these uh, big events, smaller events here in Ontario. And, uh, you know, we're getting a lot of sign up, actually. Like I said, I think before the end of the month, we're going to be hitting our, you know, 500 members uh, already. That's brilliant. So, yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to do a Canada tour, Guru Town. Canada tour. And you never know, we may be in in a uk or a european tour someday <laughs> just let me know just let me know yeah and totally, next year totally. I'll, I'll 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 do my best to be there oh yeah september totally. time for the TACCOM. yeah yeah you have a home here actually what we did now as you know uh uh m gear is always looking at uh, you know solution and in uh throughout canada uh, real estate is very high, especially pandemic. I mean, there's a lot of uh, businesses shut down, but, you know, it's still expensive. So mm. what uh, Coach Rebecca, Engineer Rebecca did is a uh, uh, smart home. You know, there's a lot of uh, lot that are not, you know, that's not, you know, you cannot build or so, but you can do portable home. <laughs> So in our in his studio now, M Gear Studio and uh, uh, Maharlika Studio, he created a you know a container, a container, a uh, home studio workspace, and so you just put this container in this lot, and there you are. You got a community. <laughs> so it's just like the. Now the, the massive container. containers for lorries. Yeah, container yeah. for truck. Yeah, for truck, yeah. you know, container. Shipping container. Shipping container. Shipping so, container. Yeah. yeah. We're aiming that now. <laughs> we're, we're looking that now to have an FMA community right here, downtown uh, Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. So, and I'm also adapting that in the farm. As you know, uh, I'm putting together an FMA community also in Bicol, Camarines Norte. I have a large uh, parcel of land there. And uh, we're going to just ship this container and create a, you know, I'll show you the picture. It looks actually, it looks awesome. By the time you put together the window, paint it up and, you know, all the, all the, uh, you know, amenities inside, it looks like a suite. <laughs> Well, to, to to I think it's it's similar to the caravans here in in the UK. Oh. You know when you go to some holiday camps. And oh yes. I think they the 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 caravans here is similar to those like shipping containers. So they just make it look like <laughs> a house. Yeah. So totally. Depend on how big. So you sometimes you get up to like three. Bedroom? Yeah, you can, you know, a you can room, also, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, one of the projects we have is to, you know, we want to be able to, you know, have a home for our students, especially to our grandmasters in the Philippines that doesn't have a home. You know, we, this is part of our uh, program is to create an FMA community that can, you know, give uh a place for us to visit or even to retire you know we're i'm hitting 68 years old uh, <laughs> so you know we have to look forward here so you That's know and, be your retirement uh, plan <laughs> well the good thing is uh, this concept of fma community is actually building because similar to my brother in brazil he has a piece of land there and he has students they're all from different parts of the country or even outside the country. Mm -hmm. At least, you know, once we say, okay, we have an FMA community here and it's open for everyone, then, you know, we feel like, oh, okay, I'd rather go there than, you know, get lost somewhere in the street of uh, 
Manila or in Rio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And so that's what uh, one of the big projects of Maharlika Institute, you know, is to promote uh, camaraderie, unity, upliftment, and promoting Filipino culture. And that's why not only our niece, we're also promoting Hilot and we're uh, Makapuso meditation and uh, also proper, proper nutrition. Uh, yung mga adobo at saka yung mga dinuguan, eh, medyo, <laughs> medyo set aside yung pare. <laughs> Yung mga healthy lang muna, healthy <laughs> lang. Yung mga yeah, balot, medyo ano tayo dyan. That's true, that's true. That's true. Yeah. You know, you we have all those. You of our food that I don't actually eat, eat now. Uh, oh, <laughs> para even we wanted to, mahirap nang i-digest pa rin. Tsaka mm. nakaka-high nakaka blood na pa rin. So, yeah, we have to. Once you get into a certain age. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you enjoy it while you were still like in your 20s or 30s. Yeah, but once you yeah, get to a certain yeah, age, yeah. Now, you have you, you know, have to slow down on it. Or even we have to watch it. our food. We have to watch what we put in our mouth, what, what we put in, in our brain, what we put in our heart. You know, we have to be more discriminate to look after this beautiful mind and yeah, body that we that's, have. That's, that's very true. Yeah. It's part of um, staying healthy. Yeah, and you know, we train yeah. so hard. I mean, Philippine martial arts is very explosive and beautiful, but if we, our body is not conditioned to that, I mean, you know, we might pass out, you know, just doing our, yeah, cool. uh, you know, sawalis and... Uh... That's very true. Yeah, yeah. That's very true. Okay, so... so, so in yeah, sports you, you mentioned... arnis, we can do that, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned about uh, Hilot. So yes, yes, yes. Is it? And you, you, you alluded earlier on that you basically you want you want also like the the athletes to learn about it because uh, the yes. the importance of understanding their body, yes. understanding their health, understanding recovery from from yes. training and from injury. Um. So what 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 is what is the difference of Hilot to like what we what we do uh well, you know, I, like for example yeah. um uh, <laughs> massage or yes yeah acupuncture acupressure or reflexology how is this different from them well i think this is the new form of healing that's gonna you know uh bring changes to healing arts in the world just like mm. our niece is becoming accepted by different martial arts uh, Hilot healing, there are so many in Philippines. I don't know, between my sister, I myself, I studied massage therapy. My sister is a doctor. and uh, But at the same time, we do Hilot because we come from a Hilot family. My parents, mm. who is not, uh, you know, a, 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 a Hilot by profession, but they are healer in their heart. You know, they actually, you know, from uh, from touching to prayer to... Uh, you know, Suob to, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. to, and, you know, a guru, Chris uh, Molie is actually one of the, we're lucky to have him here because then we can actually have, we have a master Hilot uh, uh, practitioner here in Toronto. And so we are now certifying, you know, certifying our uh, Hilot practitioners and we are teaching that. And so hopefully, it can be more approved as a Filipino form of healing, just like shiatsu, just like Swiss massage or Japanese or Chinese yeah, acupu yeah. acupuncture, you know, and all those healing culture of a different, uh, you know, different cultures. So Filipino healing is our tradition. You know, in fact, there are more hilot, uh, mang hilot, manggagamot out in the, you know, in the province before the modern medicine alternative medicine okay. is All right. already yeah. yeah yeah and so what we did is we have now integrated different forms of hilot uh, healing we call it integrative hilot so it's not only one form so it's now uh, working in the in the muscle working in the energy aligning as well and nutrition as well as heartfulness or pananam uh, you know uh, panalangi. We have to learn that we are not the healer. It is the source, the energy of the universe 
uh, up above that we are channeling with us. So, you know, we don't get burned out and we don't, mm. uh, you know, take the karma of the person. Yeah, so it's a uh, it's a uh, integrated uh, way of uh, uh, allowing the person to mm. you know to go through what they're going through because you know we get sick, we get ill because yeah. you know there's something there. Whether we <clears throat> ate something or we get stressed or you know we have some you know common disease that's uh, you know cropping yeah. up in our body. There's always reason why. We get we get ill or we get yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know this symptom and we just have to start listening to that because we are our own healer we are our own true healer you know yes. it just so happened that we have facilitator just like you know uh mangagamot or mangihilot they will you know they will uh, guide you to you know get uh, uh quicker and faster and so by us studying it how the uh, sickness, you know, comes to be how the you know toxins in our body affects our our uh, you know our system, our blood flow, our, and all yeah, that, our nervous you know. system, our lymphatic system. Yes. So you know, it can it can be. It's a science. It's there already. It's a matter of just us learning more about mm. it. You know, as a coach. You know, I I always somebody may na balian or may na saktan or something. You know, yeah. So yeah. instead of uh, yeah. yeah, and nowadays everything is a quick fix. You know, some people it's just gonna probably uh uh you know put them into emergency, put a cast in it, and you know take medicine and all that. So mm -hmm. you know, there's many form of uh, alternative medicine that if the person knows you know what can what happens to their body you know if there's some swelling or there's some you know some fracture or something they can immediately do something about it then there's an immediate healing than waiting for somebody 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 to come and you know it may not even be the yeah, right yeah. approach to, yeah. <laughs> to healing okay that's pretty cool <clears throat> i mean i'm yes. i'm interested <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think nowadays with the COVID, you know, hitting us and, uh, you know, a lot of people are getting ill, you know, we have to start going to, you know, to our body and help some kind of self-care, develop some kind of self-care, self-healing, because uh, we live in our body and our mind, you yeah. know, and we are, we are our own problem, but <laughs> this is the biggest enemy is ourself. And a lot yeah, of it is, true. you know, you know, we are just stress out people, and stress can really knock us down. <clears throat> okay, uh, we got a comment from Uwe here. Hilot practitioner, children of operation assisted as his job as GM Carlos Pulanco, Agos Kamay Combatan. Do you know him, Kuya? Carlos, Carlos is a uh, yeah. Carlos is a good friend of mine. Uh, I know him from the, okay. from a long time. <clears throat> I believe he's in Germany. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I said, there are many forms of helot. Just similar, there are many forms of arnis callis crema. Uh, helot is a, a natural. You know, uh, we are, we have some healing energy healing uh, ability that we can we can harness and that the more we know about it the more we are able to take care of our own uh yeah <clears throat> imbalances yeah you've got like similarities with uh i would say reiki and kiatsu yes 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 it's a uh, it's a uh, filipino healing combines uh energy which is very yeah. close to reiki at the same yeah. time, it has uh, many from manipulation to touch, yes. to yeah. alignment, to herbs, yeah. uh, to uh, you know, to uh, you know, soap, which is like you know, perfume. So you know, there's a lot you know that we can learn you know from Filipino healing. And the more we talk about it, I believe the world, the world needs more healing <laughs> healers you know today. 
than uh, you know any other time. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, Filipinos are very nurturing people. I look at the nurses and all the nannies that we have, all the doctors that we you know that uh, we we supply uh, from the Philippines. You know, even worker. You know, we are like the best working people in the planet. <laughs> And mm, so, mm, you know, we mm. have to start looking after ourselves because and we have to start promoting ourselves, you know, our own culture, you know, to yeah. be, get more respect and get more pay, <laughs> hopefully get more pay. <laughs> you know, I, I feel sorry to the Hilot, uh, uh, Mangi Hilot dito sa North America because, you know, uh, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not accepted. You know, you have to, you go through massage therapy or you have to go yeah, to yeah. chiropractic or osteopathic, you know, to get paid here. Uh, yeah. So yeah. a lot of manghihilot, you know, they just kind of shy away. They just work mm. nine to five job, maybe four jobs and, you know, and uh, forget what they know when they were growing up. Yeah, that's, that's the thing because you, especially... When it comes to healthcare in different countries, you're gonna be encountering a different, I mean, yeah. kind of mentality, a different kind of system. Mm -hmm. So, yes. yeah. yeah. Oh, GM Rene Tongson. Oh, He's watching GM Rene. Roman. Greetings hey, from the Philippines. Hey, Rene. Happy birthday, GM Rene. <laughs> oh yeah. Happy yeah, birthday, GM. Saw... <laughs> I, I I think yeah. they're in Europe or something. I think they're in Europe. I don't know. I just saw maybe. Bambi. Is... Yeah, maybe in Austria. I'm I'm not sure. Maybe. Yeah, Italy or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. I I see there in your banner the five pillars of sports Arnis. Can you kindly yes, totally. explain that to you? Okay. The five pillars of sports Arnis: uh, community, appreciation. Number one is appreciation of Filipino culture, and then of course the awareness, expand the recognition of Arnis. Now, we want our needs to be recognized in Canada. Now, we appreciate the culture, but we want it to be recognized by Canada Sports. And then the unity. We want to bring all the FMA together as one in uh, Sports Arnie's, uh, you know, uh, body. And the safety, of course, the safety is a uh, number one issue for uh, Canada Sports. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we follow the guideline. Uh, of how we can uh, make the Arnis competition safe, uh, not only yeah. for the players, but, you know, for the regulators. And yeah. education. Share the Filipino ma uh, martial arts and the history behind them. So, you know, Sports Arnis is more of an educational, cultural, uh, you know, competitive, athletic, recreational, mind, body, heart training. It's uh, mm -hmm. educational because we're not only educating ourselves that this wonderful art that we have is now we are actually sharing it to the world. This is yeah, our yeah. gift. This is our gift to humanity. It's not for me, not, not from, you know, one teacher to the other. This is now the Filipino Maharlikan people somehow created Sports Arnis Kali Eskrima to share to humanity today. And so that's the five pillars of sports arnis is to develop that uh, community awareness, unity, safety, and education for everyone. Nice. <laughs> and hopefully this is something that will that uh, also like uh, carry on with the rest of the other countries. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. You know, it's uh, everybody may have a different uh, tone of it. Like in Canada, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, the, uh, you know, the standard here of, uh, of safety is very high. Uh, and as, we have to follow. I think it would be with the rest as well, Kuya. Yes. <laughs> Especially when it comes to Olympics. So. Yeah. Yes, yeah. totally. You know, it's uh, the one thing we are growing now and all we need is like one, you know, somebody uh fall in their face or something pass out or something <laughs> and it goes all yeah. over the news <laughs> yeah, yeah you know that's true. That's so 
That's true. We have to well, be even I more mean, uh, Good luck with this endeavor, Kuya. And I do hope that you get more uh, participants and um, basically, yeah, interest from the different FMA groups. I mean, I know I, one of the things that we, uh, we, I mean, one of the concerns that we do have in FMA is still some people are very a bit tribalistic when it comes mm. to being a part of a bigger community in FMA. So I do yeah. hope that people would actually take this um, initiative for the sports Arnis and to, yeah. to support you. So yes. hopefully we will be able to get Arnis in the Olympics. Oh, big time. Like I said, you know, this is a call. A call to every Filipino, every Filipino martial artist you know, to support this endeavor of bringing our culture, mm -hmm. our heritage to the, uh, you know, in general public. And Olympic may be, you know, far out there, but what we can do now, you know, what we can do now is just to support us. You know, this is not for me, this is for everybody. And, you know, you can talk to your neighbor, you can talk to your family. I mean, if you're playing basketball or you're playing karate or whatever, I mean, do something about Arnis as well. This is your yeah. culture, you know. It's, uh, you know, you're contributing not only for the, uh, you know, for us, but for the future generation. You know, you can just imagine, you know, that uh, our coaches, our players, you know, they're standing on the Olympic uh, <laughs> thingy and they're getting medal. And, you know, a kid who cannot uh, educate themselves, you know, through, uh, through our niece, uh, athletic, you know, they gain scholarship. So, you know, and a coach that doesn't have money, they can actually, you know, employ themselves already as a coach for, for mm. our niece. Mm, so nice. there's so much, there's so much in it that can benefit us, you know, not only as a culture being shared also for our mental health, our physical health, but also in our uh, pocket, it can give us the job. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, this is all what I have done, you know, since I come to uh, North America, you know, all I did is uh, work as a stuntman using a stick, you know, as a, you know, a sports uh, professional for golfers, for fighters. It's all based on stick, stick work. Now I'm creating a community in the, in the Philippines. I'm becoming a manager of a green mining uh, company. <laughs> it's a, it takes management skill to do that. So, you know, I am able to practice what I know in my leadership and in my training because prepare, preparation. You know, once you do prepare, you will win. You know, if we don't mm. prepare, we don't train, we, are, we don't have a chance to win. And that's yeah. what I learned from Arnis Talis Prima is just, do your work, do your homework, prepare. You have a chance of being able to succeed. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I don't know if there's any more question from our viewers. <clears throat> um, if not, um, I will, again, in behalf of the FMA discussion, for the, from the moderators, I would like to thank you very much for being our guest. I mean, in, 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 in a short span of time, um, you, you, you um, agreed to become our guest uh, to basically share your journey in FMA, how you managed to basically um, use your skills in FMA to be able to actually break through uh, Hollywood, okay, show business, and basically all the projects that you are doing now that this is still FMA related. And we would like to uh, congratulate you on the sports I need and to say good luck for everything that will come uh, on its way. Uh, yeah, to both you and uh, uh, Tuhon Apollo, Ladra. And maybe we can, I don't know, maybe we can both have you in, in, the, in the group as a guest yes. to promote yeah. the upcoming conference and uh for for sports signings as well that might yes. be a great idea yes, i don't know if tuhan apolo ladra will be up for it 
<laughs> yeah, he will be more than happy to do that. <laughs> he will yeah. Not so, do that. so <clears throat> I mean, this yeah. is one thing that we ask to all our guests. <clears throat> okay. Um, um, do you have any like words of wisdom that you want to share? Any thoughts to the FMA community in general? Well, uh, 2022 now. And we're going to going forward. Uh, Filipino martial art is just going to go forward. It's going to go bigger. It's going to be more uh, heard by a lot of people. And the leaders of FMA community, we are the steward. You know, we we have to let go of our personal, uh, you know, uh, you know, baggage. <laughs> we have to steward the growth of Filipino martial art in whatever we can and uh you know whatever we can it's like uh one step at a time everybody is important everybody is counted no one is higher or lower each they're watching us the whole world is watching us now and this is our time to make it happen and uh you know whatever contribution you can make you know, I am here in Canada and trying to reach for the, all the Filipino community here, as well as the FMA community, as well as those people who doesn't know it. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm looking for 10,000 members to be approved in sports. So I know, you know, in my Filipino, my, my, in my group, my modern Arnis group, you know, I am, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I am wide open here. I need your help. Uh, everybody, I, you know, everybody, we need to help Filipino martial art to be uh, approved sports in the world, not only in Canada. It's already approved in, 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 in the Philippines, but they still need help. So our Philippines is our motherland. It's not going to go anywhere. It's, uh, you know, it's the art of the Philippines. And so us outside, you know, we have to go back to the motherland. We have to show respect to our elders. And so, you know, what we are doing outside, let's bring it back home to make it as a whole to be one whole body for uh, the future. Oh. Thank you for the message, Kuya. Very yeah, timely. And of course, don't forget my new movie coming out. Man behind oh, when the is shell. It, when is it going to be? When it when is well, it coming out? Oh, we're we're still filming. Man behind the shell. You know, <laughs> as, as as I am traveling, we're filming. As we're talking, everything. All of this is being. Uh, I putting this as a you know as a it's a documentary of my journey. You know, from mm -hmm. uh, you know being a turtle, and uh, I'm luckily I am uh, you know able to be able to uh project that you know <laughs> there's still a lot of turtle fun out there kuya town yeah definitely <laughs> so I, I, said, mean, <laughs> I mean i I'm, said i'm, I'm doing sure artists they, now <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure that they the moment they know oh they're out <laughs> the internet is out well hopefully they come back for the last part but okay i i if they don't manage to come back, I would like to thank everybody for tuning in uh, for tonight's uh, episode 330 with uh, Datu Sishir in Okalia. And I do hope that you, uh, you uh, we, we get to support the Sports Arnis uh, project of Datu Sishir uh, and uh, Tuhon Apollo Ladra. I think it's a good way for a good avenue for FMA to band together, to become united, okay, and to push for something that will benefit us all. Okay, um, I'm just gonna let's. I'm just going to a little bit if they're coming back. <clears throat> okay, but just again, just as a reminder. Uh, on Wednesday, I'm going to have an interview with Stephanie Lee of uh, Astiglameco. Uh, and then Dean on Thursday will interview uh, Burton Richardson. They're back. I think I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you're back. <laughs> hey, look at that. Eh? 
<laughs> technology, technology. Yeah, totally. Thank yeah, you I very much. Yeah, it should make our here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> supposed to be. Supposed to be. But I really thank you, uh, FMA Discussion, Kuya, for inviting us into your show. Uh, you know, we have to go out there and talk more about our culture, our FMA, our Arnis Kalis Krima, and just share to the world how beautiful people we are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, very welcome and thank you as well. And thank you, Biko. Oh, oh yeah, M -Gear. Biko, selamat daw, M Gear. <laughs> Okay, for for uh, on, helping, helping us facilitate this interview. Yeah, the man behind Guys, the scene. <laughs> your uh, Beko, stay there. So that is Beko, and he actually owns M Gear. If you are the, the tactical gears that you see. <laughs> yeah. And he's also the one that is basically uh, supporting uh, Dato Sashir and Okalia with 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 all this. Uh, um advocacy and uh sports arnis in canada so yes, thank you beko okay. for doing that yeah thank you now beko thank you so he is the man behind the ha the man behind the show <laughs> <laughs> he wears many hats he wears... <laughs> uh, yeah well we have to we have to uh we have to debate on that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah Okay, so I mean, yeah, so I'm I'm hoping next year, guys, that I'll be able to join you. Okay. Yes, totally. Yeah, more than yeah. happy, more than. And happy. then we'll we'll see about December. I'm I'm interested, but let's. Oh let's wow, see. that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'll see yeah. my budget. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do fundraising now. We'll do some car washing or something. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. So again, okay. thank you, Kuya, and thank you for those who uh, for those who tune in for this interview. Of course. Okay. Um, good luck to everything that you do. Good luck to the endeavor. Good luck to the campaign yeah. and everything. Okay, and we'll, okay. we'll keep in touch. Salamat. Thank you very much. Mabuhay, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Pugay at Mabuhay. Salamat po. Salamat po. Okay. Right there, you go, guys. So once again, thank you very much. So again, Wednesday, it's going to be an interview with Stephanie Lee. Um, Astiglameco Norcal, and also uh, Thursday, it's gonna be an interview with uh, Burton Richardson, uh, done by Dean Franco. Okay, have a nice week ahead of you. Okay, uh, and see you next time. <laughs>